is the difference between you and me? Or what is it that we have in common? Let's see. You use a mobile phone or a laptop, so do I. You maybe drive a car and have a driving license, so do I. You, know, you swim, play football, so do I. So what is it that makes us different? The only thing that really comes to my mind is that you have two spare limbs, <laughs> no pun intended. But on a serious note, the point I'm trying to make is that you and the differently able people have to find common ground and work together for, a, you know, for the greater good of humanity. You know, when I look back at it, the idiom, life can be stranger than fiction, I think best describes my life. I'll let you decide that. So I'll start the journey from the very beginning, you know. So once upon a time, there was a young and beautiful couple who were blessed with two healthy boys, Vivek and me. The age difference was only 13 months, and we were inseparable. You know, being the younger one, I was more adventurous and more, I would say, mischievous, like younger ones usually are. And life was good. Life was, I would say, uh, as good as it gets. But fate had something else in store. Like quite literally, in a flash, my life changed permanently its course. On June 24th, 1977, I met with an electrical accident. I came in contact with 11,000 volts of current. I was fortunate to survive that accident, but in the process, both my hands were completely burnt right up till my shoulders. You know, I spent almost three months in the hospital because the doctors were trying to save as much of my hand as possible. But finally, gangrene had set in, and they were left with no choice but to amputate both my hands. But life did not end there. I would like to think that you know, this incredible journey, I think it was the beginning of that incredible journey. I am indebted to my parents, my family, because without them, I don't think I would have managed to achieve anything. They were literally the wind beneath my wings. They did not give up on me or, or my future. And, you know, I read somewhere that depression is the inability to construct a future. You know, my family and I actually found ourselves in uncharted waters. You know, when you're no longer able to change the situation, you're challenged to change yourself. Viktor Frankl's words echoed in my parents' mind. Because everything had changed permanently. Literally, like overnight, everything had changed. So it's important that we accept and adopt change if you want to move on. If you want to move forward, you need to, you know, accept the change. I was constantly reminded that disability is a state of mind. It has actually nothing to do with your hands or your legs. You know, with determination and with perseverance, I think you can overcome any hurdle in life. So what is more important is that you have the right attitude towards life. You know, you need to have a positive attitude towards life. Now, if you think you can do something or if you think that you cannot do something, either ways you're correct. Because what is important is what you think. So it is more important that we, you know, Think positively, because sometimes that is the difference between failure and success. You know, I learned a lot of things after my accident. I mean, I never swam before accident. I never skated before my accident. It was only after the accident that my parents motivated me to take up all these activities. And now, you know, I, when I look back and I think about why I succeeded, is because I think I was not under any kind of pressure to succeed. You know, sometimes we fail because of the pressure that is put upon us, you know, to succeed. 
So what is more important is that you try. You know, I've actually tried so many activities and some of them I still continue to do is only because I was not under any kind of obligation or any kind of pressure to succeed. So again, making mistakes is acceptable. I've made so many mistakes. As long as you don't repeat your mistakes, I think they're also acceptable. Now, when I, you know, actually ponder that what have I or my family done that is what other differently able people might not have done, is that we have utilized our limited resources to the maximum. You know, of course, if we had focused only on that I don't have hands, I don't think I would have moved on. But we focus our attention on what was available, like my legs, my shoulder. Nowadays with technology, with mobile phones, I use my nose, because all you need to do is create a contact. So it is important that, you know, otherwise I come across a lot of people who are just, you crib about things that they don't have and fail to see all those plethora of things that are at their disposal. So it's more, it's not about what you don't have or what you have, it is about making the most of what you have at your disposal. So the, I would say the moral of the story is that I guess one should never give up and one should adopt change, face challenges, think positively. Everything is possible and life goes on. You know, it's very important to realize, understand that life doesn't come to an end just because you lose your hands or you meet with an accident. Now, in 2015, you know, I just felt that I needed to be more independent. You know, I was fed up of being dependent on others for my mobility, you know, drivers, friends. So I decided to do something about it. So in 2015, I bought my car, my automatic Celerio, my first car, and I started learning to drive. You know, I had to learn on my own because there's no agency to teach you to drive with your feet. You know, I've had to do that with several things, whether it was writing with my foot, whether it was brushing, shaving, everything is self-taught. So, to my surprise, I started driving very well within a very short period. But then the bigger challenge happened to be the driving license. Because for that, I was dependent on a third party. I had to convince others that I was, I would say, uh, competent or I was somebody who deserved to get a license. Because people forget that, you know, uh, for the differently able, mobility is a big issue. I think, you know, if you think about it, accessibility in India is still something that is very, I would say, poor. So for us, driving is not a luxury, it is a necessity. So I think after a struggle of almost, uh, I would say, 15 months, I was finally allotted the driving license, making me the first Indian to get a driving license driving with my own feet, without hands, that is. And again, like I said, driving has given me so much, I would say, pleasure and freedom. It's, I mean, I can't explain it. <laughs> it's, not, you know, it's something that uh, I wish uh, I'd done sooner. But anyhow, there I do So my childhood dream, you know, I, I never dreamt of being the first Indian to say, get the driving license or motivate the authority to amend the Motor Vehicle Act. That was actually, I mean, I don't think any child dreams of that. So my real childhood dream was to be a car racer, like most children. You know, that is what I dreamt of. And believe you me, that dreams do come true. Because in 2017, I was invited to participate in my first car rally. It was a local event, it was a three-day event, and to everyone's surprise and shock, I came first in the amateur category. I mean, I have no explanation for that, but you know, somehow I managed to do that. And I, I take a lot of pride in sharing this, that I've, done, I've competed in seven events. I've taken part in seven events, and I have five uh, podium finishes out of seven. You know, because I relate 
rallying to life in the sense when you rally you'd never know what obstacles are going to come in your way just like life and the only option choice you have is to overcome those challenges and i guess that is why i seem to succeed in you know in this sport because of that attitude towards life so before i sort of conclude i would just like to briefly speak about a very important topic which is inclusion inclusion means where every part everyone in the society gets to participate everyone's voice is heard they have a uh, you can say uh, equal opportunity in policy making and i have personally benefited from that you know i've never studied in a special school my parents had to fight for that but again as i said i have i've been uh, very fortunate that i've never had to study in any special school and as i've mentioned that inclusion is actually my birthright you know i'm no different from you guys so why should i be treated any different the 6 years we lived abroad i was fortunate to live uh, uh, you know abroad for 6 years and i really it was like a first hand experience of what it means to be like you know for an inclusive society i didn't have to ask for anything everything was already in place now after coming back to india unfortunately we are lagging far behind you know we have a long long way to go you know we do a lot of lip service we have accessibility india as one of the slogans but unfortunately it's not on the like on the ground it's only you know it's a, just a concept so as mahatma gandhi ji also remarked the true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members so we need more i would say inclusion accommodating and accepting i would say society so that people like me you know have an opportunity to actually contribute meaningfully so do what you can with what you have and where you are thank you so much